Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Sembird. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. John Kim joins me next, the CEO of Sembird. John, welcome to the program. Talk to the audience about Sembird. What is it that you guys do? What gaps in the market did you see back in 2013? Yeah, well, thank you for, uh, so much and I'm excited to be here. So uh, just to give you a quick introduction about Sembird, we um, started the company back in uh, 2013 and then uh, we first started out as a consumer-based product building social network for moms. Uh, but around 2015, when the world was really moving towards uh, messaging, we kind of looked at it as an opportunity uh, to build a messaging feature for our own application. That's when we kind of realized a problem that we there weren't really modern SDK or API products that can enable modern messaging experience for other applications. So uh, we decided to kind of build that and then actually launched on the side, which actually became the main business. So we applied to Y Combinator with that idea and launched to the world in 2016. And then kind of fast forward, you know, good six years, we're now powering over a quarter billion users on a monthly basis, sending billions and billions of messages across, across different, different you know, verticals, verticals like, like online, online communities, like Reddit, like Reddit uh, food deliveries, deliveries like, like DoorDash, uh, et cetera. So, so it's kind of where we, we are today. today. And you're now valued at $1 billion. So a lot of evolution, a lot of momentum since 2013, especially since 2016, but also during the last couple of years. Talk to me about some of the philosophies and the approaches that Sendbird has applied to be driving such momentum during such volatile times. Yeah, um, I think over the years, what world uh, I came to realize is that more, more and more businesses are becoming mobile first. So by uh, focusing on the mobile-based uh, experiences, conversations really became one of the most uh, efficient and effective ways to build relationship between the users as well as the relation with the brands. So by uh, incorporating experiences like in a messaging, people were able to increase the engagement and the retention and ultimately the conversion within the applications. And that's kind of where we come in because more and more it bec it's becoming harder and harder for developers and the business operators to build modern messaging experience. So we really want to make sure that all of the developers and all of the businesses can harness the power of uh, in a messaging as easily as possible, getting all the you know, feature richness plus the um, scalability that you need. So we really try to build the best in class product so that uh, you can uh, have those in a messaging uh, within your application. Let's talk about that. So building relationships in a digital world today is table stakes for any business. Consumers' patience was quite thin the last couple of years. It probably still is to some extent. But building relationships in today's omni-channel world, whereas consumers, we expect, we can go to many different applications, apps, and complain or raise issues with technologies or products or services. How is that table stakes for an organization to be able to have that in-app experience to retain the customer's the data, the insights. Yeah, uh, today, if you think about how uh, businesses are engaging with customers, there are a lot of different channels, right? There's SMS, there's you know, phone calls, direct mailing, emails, and also in a messaging. If you think about as a user, what is the best experience you want to have with the, um, uh, with the brands is usually through the mobile applications. That's why the entire mobile economy has uh, really uh, grew and exploded uh, over the years. One thing that if you think about, again, as a user, what are the experiences that you don't like to have is if you think about SMSs. Uh, uh, SMS is now plagued with like phishing and scams issues. FTC reported that there are more than you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that are costing US consumers uh, last year. And that's more than 50% growth from the previous year. So more and more these kind of other external channels are becoming a channel for, again, for like phishing and scams and really uh, disrupting the user experience. But if you think about it in a messaging, becoming your default mode of uh, engaging with the brands and other users is secure, more reliable. And also as businesses, you get, you, you get to control the user experience plus actually owning the data so you can actually uh, improve your products and services on top of that. So that's some of the uh, approaches that we've seen over the years is more and more businesses are using in a messaging as the default mode of communication and then using other channels as a kind of like a last mile delivery in case you know users miss certain kind of conversation, they may rely on those um, other channels as a fallback option. Uh, just to touch a little bit on the, uh, just to touch a little bit on the uh, messaging side of things. So if you think about how the world is using messaging today, uh, you might you know think of messaging apps like you know, Meta, uh, Facebook Messenger, or you know WhatsApp, and all of this, this other kind of consumer applications, consumer mobile messaging is kind of really dominating the world. But if you think about individual businesses, you really don't really want to hand over those experiences 
and their user data to other kind of uh, social media networks. So what you want to do is actually have that similar level, if not better, experience within your application, but also be able to, again, own those data, control this, those data, and make sure that your users, your customers are having a very clean and secure experience on your application. Absolutely. That secure, clean experience is critical for brands. Talk to me about how your customer conversations have evolved over the last few years as brand loyalty, customer satisfaction scores, churn, all of these things are very impactful to organizations. Has the conversation risen up the C-suite? Is it is it that impactful these days? Yeah, uh, so really based on the brands that you are uh, operating, uh, again, like the customer engagement and customer retention and sometimes the uh, conversations turning into business outcomes through uh, conversions, all of these things are really uh, impacted a lot by the uh, conversations or in a messaging. So what we've seen over the years is anywhere from uh, the user acquisition perspective from the marketing, also within the uh, user engagement and retention that's happening in your application, whether it be user to user or have your sales team having conversations uh, with the customers, uh, and ultimately to like customer support, measuring CSAS and how do you keep the customers, make sure that the customers never hit a dead end. All of this uh, entire customer journey now can be mapped through in messaging. So because that's becoming more and more important and critical for your business, now, is, uh, the, if you think about our buyers today, we're talking to CEOs and you know, CTOs, as well as chief digital officers in some of these um, enterprises companies. That makes sense. I mean, some of the, the benefits that you've mentioned, increasing retention, driving I'm, direct sales, cross sale, upsell, brand loyalty, that impacts every aspect of an organization, customer success, et cetera. Let's talk now about some customer examples. I know you mentioned Reddit. I know Hinge is another great customer example. Give me a couple examples that really showcase the value that Sunbird delivers. Yeah, so Reddit has been one of our earliest customers, um, even when we were like just a C-stage company. If you think about Reddit, Reddit has successfully tra uh, trans transformed from the web-based company to a mobile-first company. And by incorporating in a messaging to a modern uh, experiences, just like, again, what you have on WhatsApp, they were able to increase the user engagement and ultimately the retention on the application. So more and more users are coming back to the application uh, in any given month. So that's one, um, one example. And again, keeping the community safe and secure is very, very important for a community like Reddit. So uh, offering powerful you know, moderation capabilities for the um, community mods, those are also very important factors why Reddit uh, decided to work with us. Some of the other examples like you know, Crafton, PUBG, one of the world's most successful and largest games today, now they were able to, they were able to increase the user engagement and ultimately the overall you know session time within the game by incorporating in a messaging that powers the users uh, online communities through lobby chat as well as you know, clan chat. So how do you keep the users uh, more engaged and return to the game and stay there for a longer period of time? Ultimately increasing the lifetime value uh, of the gamers and then a few other like business industry use cases like Kip Trucking recently uh, rebranded as Motive uh, drastically improved the collaboration between this you know operations control. And, the, and it's uh, truck drivers. So uh, those kind of uh, communication capabilities obviously increase the uh, safety of the drivers as well as the trust and that openness and the overall uh, collaboration within the businesses. So those are some of the examples. And I think we mentioned like Hinge before, how do you kind of bring all of those conversations to stay within the application so the users don't have to reveal their you know, personal information so that the conversation become, again, stays on the application, keep the user happy, more secure and safe for the, um, all the users. That security is something that keeps jumping out to me. We have seen the threat landscape change dramatically in the last couple of years. It is so amorphous. But you mentioned um, the SMS security issues that it has. And I, I think a stat that you guys provided to me was that the FTC reported that tech scams cost U.S. consumers $131 million last year in 2021, which, as you mentioned, is a huge increase from 2020. Talk a little bit more about the importance of being able to abstract some of that personal information as consumers, we give it out so freely and it's, it's, a, it's a risk. Absolutely. Um, so again, some of the most common phishing scams that we all as the consumers receive uh, these days are, you know, pretending to be another businesses telling you, hey, click here to, you know, um, get a refund on, on, on a credit card charge or, you know, there's a fraudulent cases like there is something that make, makes you either call a number or you know go to a certain link, uh, and you kind of have to trust and try to figure out: is this some messaging that's really that brand that you are engaging with, or is it something someone else that's you know, pretending to that to be that brand? So it's the burden is on the um, end customers. Unfortunately, 
uh, all the phishings and everything is like a lot of large, large numbers. So the more people you uh, send out those messages, ultimately someone will get tricked into those messages, ultimately costing a lot of money for the um, end consumers. Now, the benefit of having in-app conversations is that your users are secure. Uh, when the users get a push notification or uh, uh, in a message, you know where that's exactly happening because you have the full context of the business and the application you're in. Uh, and then whenever there's someone, somebody sends you a message, you know that the sender and the receiver is already authenticated. So those users are secure from the get-go. And because of the contextual rich uh, experience you have within the in-app messaging, plus all of those um, extra security layers that are baked into the user experience, the, the, the end benefit for the customers are incredible because again you can trust the conversation that you're having with the brand and then the messages tend to be a lot more richer and better user experience also better in latency and just overall more frictionless experience for the end customers so um, that gives a lot more safety for, and uh, more uh, benefit for the end customer as well as the uh, business brands absolutely two things that you just said that really jumped out at me trust and authenticity we think of the five generations that are in the workforce today engaging with companies via apps, that that trust and authenticity and that security is, it just, it gets more important every day. Talk to me about when you're in customer conversations or you're talking with analysts, what are some of the things that you describe as the key differentiators that makes SendBird's in-app messaging really stand out above the competition? Yeah, one of the things that we really focused on was, can we actually serve the world? Uh, so scalability is one of the key important aspects, how we were able to win uh, customers like Reddit and you know, DoorDash and even like incredible customers like Paytm, one of the largest uh, fintech application in um, India. So being able to provide a, a, a scalability so that uh, your customers, our customers and the developers can go to sleep at night without having to worry about will this work or not. But also other on top of, uh, top of those things, uh, the feature richness, because uh, ultimately what our customers want is how can they engage with their customers in a modern and a, a sleek way. So by offering the features that are up and uh, latest and the greatest that you would expect out, out of other consumer applications, again, like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or even things like Slack, we offer a lot of those features from the get-go. So by having those feature richness out of the box, you can implement a modern messaging experience um, from day one. So you can go to market much faster, but also give more trust for the users because ultimately end customers are already used to using the best uh, messaging experiences out there. So as soon as they kind of feel the experience are a little bit, you know, outdated, they'll stop trusting the brand. So how do you kind of give that moderate and trusting and a secure experience for the user is uh, very, very critical for the businesses. So we can offer those uh, again from the out of the box. Out of the box, absolutely table stakes for businesses in every industry. John, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE today, talking to me about Sunbird in-app messaging, the values, the benefits, the what's in it for customers and businesses. We appreciate your insights. Yeah, thanks so much. For John Kim, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE Conversation.